my first exposure to Bill Durham was not actually lactose intolerance, but was yams and malaria in West Africa in the coevolution course, which I took sort of forced as a distribution requirement. I was absolutely riveted. And after a few lectures, I asked him, where do I study this stuff? And so Dr. Durham sent me over to human biology, where I learned about lactose intolerance and so many amazing things from him and the other faculty. What I remember the most, though, is Bill's incredible personal mentorship of myself and so many other students. Uh, he took us uh, to conferences. He introduced visiting professors. Uh, he advised us on scholarship applications and uh, always had a wonderful sense of humor and was interested in what we were doing uh, and cared so much uh, about uh, human biology and about every student who came through. Thank you, Bill, and congratulations. My name is Sergio Nabel. I'm a former student of Bill Durham's from the 1990s, class of 1994. Bill was my mentor and thesis advisor, and well, just a great influence on my life. I work in conservation now and really owe that to Humbio and to Bill's inspiration as a teacher. Actually, when I heard this notice from uh, Humbio that you were having the celebration, I went down into the basement and dug up a bunch of old pictures from that experience. What is this, Chuck? These are something called slides. These are, yeah, so to take photos on the slides. And Whoa, look at that! Yeah. And looking through them with my kids, what uh, the feeling that I got was also one of tremendous gratitude uh, for the time that Bill made uh, to meet with me, to discuss things, to work through problems together. Um, and also just how, uh, how much he went out of his way, even though he was uh, so busy at the time. Um, so part of this is we were in this very, very remote place in uh, Chiapas in southern Mexico, um, probably one of the remotest places I've ever been. And um, we were living up there for uh, a couple months in uh, these little villages. I actually, we were sleeping on church pews. Um, and we hear this sound of a, an ATV coming up, which was pretty rare. There weren't that many of those kinds of vehicles up there. And it's coming up the hill and you see Bill Durham riding in. Um, I think he'd probably spent four hours on that thing and then a mule and a bus and an airplane. Uh, you know, he traveled so far just to come and check in on me and on my wife now, who, is, uh, who was down there with, with us doing, doing research. Uh, for her own Humbio thesis, um, and Bill brought chocolate, which was um, a very nice touch. Um, anyway, I feel so grateful to Bill and to Humbio for uh, the impact it's had on my life. Bill really prioritizes people, regardless of how busy he is or <laughs> how much sleep he is or isn't getting. He really takes the time to think about the people in his life and in his work and to take the time to invite them to lunch, to write them a note, to get them a little gift from when he travels. Um, and I think that's really special. I just have so much gratitude for Bill and for the incredible support um, he's given to me. And I know that I am not one of a handful of students, but I am one of hundreds of students that he has given that level of care and attention to and support for following our own passions and inspiration, um, but guiding us um, as we do that. I honestly, honestly remember it as one of the best moments of my academic life. Um, hugely pivotal for me, I think. Um, ended up informing a lot of the work I do now. Um, I look at cultural influences on parenting advice, infant sleep, on the research that's done, uh, that humbio, multidisciplinary perspective was important then and it continues to be today. So thank you. Um, you were honestly one of the best teachers I ever had. The best. You were the best. I think the real legacy of Bill and his lectures and his teaching methods is that he really encourages students to take a very critical look at what they think they know and to um, not be afraid to uh, change what they know or what they think they know based on new information. One thing I value so much about Bill is he's one of those people who has truly strong beliefs but 
they're loosely held. And he's a model of that from his early career where he, I think, first challenged a very established academic um, in some very strongly held beliefs and disproved those beliefs and created a whole new theory, a uh, proven um, theory around um, in his field. And what he did since then is really create the space for students to also build strong beliefs but remind us to hold them loosely so that we could continue to be challenged. And he set the example for that, allowing us to challenge him, to challenge ideas at any time, to bring new um, concepts and disciplines together to make breakthroughs in thinking. And that's a rare thing and a very, very special quality of Bill's. Um, my situation is in some ways I think a bit unique with respect to the lactose lectures. Um, my daughter Isabel actually just uh, finished the core uh, last year. Um, I'd actually talked to her about some of the ideas I'd learned in human biology when she was in high school and learning about evolution and things. And uh, the lactose uh, lectures were, were a part of that. When she came back at Christmas, uh, she somewhat smugly told me, that um, the things I had told her about um, you know, the lactose intolerant were actually um, mostly wrong and uh, very out of date. Um, now, as a parent of um, a teenager, you're kind of used to being told that you're quite out of date. And So I tried to explain the lactose malabsorption hypothesis to my kids, and so I'm attaching a little video of their interpretation of that. So. There's no sun in Europe. Well, the sun doesn't shine because they're so far north. So, that means there's no vitamin D, so people bone break. Oh no! How sad, how sad, how sad. Then, so then, along comes a cow, moo, moo. And then he has milk, and that equals strong man. And the bones are all healed. So that's why, in Europe, People can digest the lactose in the milk because that's how they get their calcium. Um, and so, they're because there's sun here is why we have strong bones. But what is the sun and how's it? What's the connection between sun and calcium? Can you explain that. Because the vitamin D, and that's calcium. The vitamin D is calcium. Kind of. Uh, lactose malabsorption. Let's see. Mm. Cultures in Africa, uh, when they started uh, there, were able to absorb vitamin D from lots of sunshine and metabolism, metabolize it so that they had strong bones. It has to do with calcium. We evolved not to uh, need to digest lactose because uh, we, when we weaned from our mothers, uh, we got it from the sun, just didn't need it anymore, I think. Uh, as cultures migrated north and sunshine was not as plentiful, uh, people began to get rickets uh, as a result of inadequate calcium in their bones. Um, and culture evolved a technology to make yogurt and cheese, which took cow's milk and broke the lactose molecule so that it became digestible. Uh, and ultimately, over time, we evolved to then be able to digest lactose. Um, so culture, evolution, work together. One of the things um, I'll always remember that Bill ingrained in my psyche is the connection between genes and culture, between our biological evolution and our cultural practices and mores. And the lactose concept was a classic of those where we learned that cultures who had developed a practice of raising cattle and other milk producing animals did not develop lactose intolerance and those who did not have that cultural practice often did have lactose um, intolerance. So, so many simple examples that he provided in such incredible detail that allowed us to hold concepts, um, really important concepts about the interconnection between genes and culture for the rest of our lives. Actually, I remember the day you gave that lecture. I remember the classroom I was sitting in. I remember there was colored chalk involved. I really remember having my brain sort of blown by, 
I don't know, the elegance of it all. You told such a good story. It was such a good story. Um, and it all came together so wonderfully. And I honestly, honestly remember it as one of the best moments of my academic life. He's doing something really different from what most professors do. He's not telling you about a problem or giving you answers to a solution. Um, he's really walking you through that scientific process, that scientific journey, and having you figure it out along the way with him, which is really uh, compelling as a student to be involved in walking specifically through those steps. But I think there's this other part, which is this really genuine enthusiasm for science that comes through so strongly and makes it so exciting and so so captivating and being part of that scientific story and then walking away not only with the tools to think scientifically and critically and across disciplines but also having that genuine curiosity and enthusiasm to participate in the scientific process I think is really special and so when I think about lactose that all kind of comes to mind.